this is Eric from Future of Forestry. Um, this is a part of a blog series that I just started. This is the first ever audio interview. It's here with you, TJ. Hello, everybody. This is uh, TJ Hill from San Diego. So you've contributed quite a bit to Future of Forestry. Um, I think one of my my favorites is the slow your breath down video, the rehearsal video that we did before oh, yeah. tour. And that one has been just loved. In fact, um, th I just got this recently. This was like a couple months ago. I got I get these notifications from YouTube on my phone. Um, I got to turn them off because you know I don't really need them. But anyway, yeah, I get this. I get this. Um, I get this message from YouTube saying that drummer is disgusting. <laughs> and I'm thinking. And I'm like, yeah, I've. I mean, I did shower. Yeah. Today. <laughs> Exactly. I'm like, wait, what is what is this what is this guy saying? Obviously, this drummer didn't mean that you didn't brush your teeth. He was just watching you play and was just flabbergasted by what you were doing because in that video, you're playing this first of all the beat. It's an incredibly difficult beat, but then you also are switching to the Glockenspiel, which now are you using the reverse side of your stick or I can't remember how you switch to that. Yeah, we figured out um, for that tour, it was kind of a stripped down kit, you know, just kick, snare, and um, cymbals. And then we were like, oh, I think we can stick the glockenspiel where the floor tom would go. Right. And I was like, there isn't, there were some really tight transitions. And it was like, we had to figure out how to, how am I going to switch to glockenspiel mallets? Because if you just play glockenspiel with drumsticks, you hear like this wooden attack sound, but you don't really hear the, chime of the bar so i went to home depot with a pair of drumsticks i've actually done this a number of times home depot with a bow to like listen to different saws um i mean you've you've probably done stuff like the this home depot too, it's like your second mu guitar center yeah it's like you know <laughs> you're you're like sitting there like bending saws and bowing them and being like oh, i think this one's a little bit too high and the, the home depot workers looking at you just like you know, yeah, we got a psycho on our three on. like security. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, no, but anyway, I went there um, with, with the sticks I was using and um, f went to the like rubber tubing aisle, and I found this um, red rubber tubing that just fit on perfectly. Like you had to kind of jam it on there, but I didn't have to use any glue or anything. So for that whole tour, I just made a whole bunch of these sticks that had tubing on the back side and then you could just do a little half flip and then you've got glockenspiel mallets which which if noted the um when you watch this video i'll post the link to this video if you haven't seen it but the camera guys and the editing made sure to show that little flip so you can see it and so i think that is the single part that this this viewer thinks is disgusting Hey, it's, you know, it's like uh, what used to get you in trouble in band, you know, spinning your sticks. It's like comes in handy right. later. Oh, and my, one of my favorite things about this video is I had somebody um, email and say, hey, I found you guys this trick. There is one overdub on the on the track. You added something. And I'm like, um, that's really interesting because we didn't do any overdubs on this on the on the video. Um, and I said, well, what is it? And they're they like, it's a tambourine. I hear a tambourine and nobody's playing the tambourine. I'm like, oh. Actually, that's TJ playing the tambourine with his left foot, is it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, the um, because we had next to the hi hat, we had a a tambourine foot pedal as well. So you're pretty much TJ Hill for Future Forestry is like the guy walking down the street with a bunch of instruments strapped on his back. So I, I'm interested in sharing a little bit about and exploring about how music started for you because your life is so full of music. You are extremely talented. So how did it all start? Um, what was the beginning of music for you? Um, so my mom is a music teacher, and so music was always in our house and um, did kind of the typical, like, you know, you're strongly encouraged by your parents uh, to do piano lessons. And um, at the time, I didn't really like it. We lived in the mountains near Yosemite, and I would kind of, I was more interested in running around on my bike and, you know, playing with my remote control cars and the dirt and stuff like that. And then, um, but I, you know, I was probably kindergarten, first grade, but I did take piano lessons. And, uh, at that time it, it was kind of, 
I resisted learning how to read music and I would just play by ear. Um, and eventually I did have to learn how to read, but it was not the most uh, smooth process. But anyway, um, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, but yeah, so I didn't really love love music, but then we moved from from the mountains to kind of the Bay Area in California and um, kind of near San Francisco hour or so from there. And uh, yeah, I think I, I didn't have an outlet for my energy. I was a very like restless, energetic child. You know, I would like to play with matches and go around. And my mom was also a gardener and we, my friend and I would sharpen sticks and ride around our bikes and chop down her flowers and, you know, cool, like super typical, nice like, stuff like typical that. Typical boy childhood <laughs> and wanting to burn yeah. things down and creating weapons out of anything you can think of. Oh yeah, totally. Well, and, and maybe like American child. <laughs> so you're, so you uh, are normal. I mean, you're not, you're not the psycho in aisle three at Home Depot. No, no, no. I've stopped making weapons. So okay. um, <laughs> By you stopped like at age thirty. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Uh, although, tell me, uh, we'll have to talk about what it's like to fly overseas with a, a musical saw in your baggage and telling people that it's an instrument. Anyway, um, but uh, yeah, so I kind of I didn't really have a way to channel my energy. So then, probably in fifth grade is kind of when I returned to music. No, yeah, fifth grade. I returned to music kind of on my own terms and started playing drums and guitar. And at that point, it was like moth to a flame. It just quickly became like my thing. And from then until now, it's been like all music all the time. Hmm. Wow. So so basically your parents started you and you didn't, there was no like emotional connection to it. It wasn't your love. You were doing it out of obligation. And then all of a sudden you just fell in love with it. Yeah, and it's hard to say. I don't even remember my relationship with music as a kid. I think it just kind of would flow. Like I could sit down on the piano and just kind of play, but it wasn't it was something that I did, but it wasn't something that I enjoyed. Right. So talk to me about um drums then because I know you learned all these other instruments, but drums is something that you are just so spectacular at. Um um Tell me about, I mean, you have, we have a lot of listeners here that are aspiring drummers to what you do. Um, was there something that you did that may be different than others or just something that specifically that kind of escalated you to, to have the skill that you have as a drummer? Um, I think, I mean, I, I have my parents to thank for a lot of that because when I expressed interest in playing drums, you know, as most sensible parents <laughs> would think, they're, they're like a little bit um, hesitant to, you know, just go out and buy your kid a drum set because it's just like, you know, it turns your your house into just like um, a a hellacious noise scape where there's just like a cacophony of banging and clanging and, you know, all, all the time. So my parents said, um, okay, like if, if you want to play drums, like that's cool. We're going to get you, let's get you a practice pad. Um, and then before we actually get you some drums, like we want you to show that you're serious about it and that it's not, you know, just a phase. Wow. And so I had, I had started, um, taking drum lessons as well from a teacher, which I would highly, highly recommend if you're serious about building a good foundation. Um, a lot you of times- You started drum, drum lessons with a pad only. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. For probably about six months. Are you and then, kidding me? Yeah. And oh then, my gosh, so it building... would have been day three. I'd be like, I'm done with this stupid <laughs> pad. And I would wake up like every morning and for like a half hour, like 6.30 to 7 before school, I would just be tapping away on my pad, you know, um, wow. trying to build good techniques. And one thing I would say is that if you start out building bad habits, it's, they're a lot harder to break later. So if you're just getting into drums, if you can get with a teacher, it doesn't have to be forever. I mean, I took lessons from fifth grade up until up through high school. So I took a lot of lessons. But yeah, so after six months... It was like, okay, you've proven that you're serious about it. Like, this isn't going away. And then it was like, let's, you can get a drum set, but you have to pay for half of it. So it was still, there was like a buy in. You know what I mean? It's not just like, oh, little Johnny wants to play a drum set. Let's get him like a $3,000 DW kit. 
you know. So it was kind of a janky drum set, but it was like mine. And I was super stoked about it. If you leave, I'll still be close to you. 